Oh, I'm already live. All right. Hair not looking so good, guys. Sorry. Hi, James. So the lighting is bad, as always. I'm sorry. So white. I'm so not as professional as Ashley. Hi, Kelsey. Hi, Terry. I am so sorry about the lighting, guys. <laughs> it's just bad. Is this okay? Can you guys hear me all right? This is bad. The lighting is awful. I don't know why I do these live videos knowing that I'm going to have bad lighting. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Terry. So it's okay, you guys, the lighting. I don't think there's anything I can do. This is going to be bad. All right. It's as good as it's going to get. Sorry. All right. Yay. I haven't done a live in so long. It feels like forever. And of course, I'm having a really bad hair day. I'm going to take this jacket off. And yeah, really bad lighting. Anyway. All right. My bracelets were getting caught on my jacket. Okay. Ooh. So we'll wait a little bit. Oh, it's bad hair. Bad hair. Okay. Oh, that's okay, Sarah. I, tell me what you think. Think. I want to know what you thought about the Vivian Cash episode. I don't know if you guys have seen, we have a new YouTube channel video up right now um, about Patsy Klein that I'm so excited about. Really happy about the way that turned out. Okay. <laughs> it is what it is. I'm just, oh. Thank you, Terry, because I feel like I'm a hot mess right now. So I just did an interview with my brother. My brother has a channel, um, Carolyn's Treasures Shop. I'm hoping that he's going to change the name for his, um, his YouTube channel. So he interviewed me, and I kept asking him if my hair looked okay because he was rushing me. Um, obviously, it does not. So... I don't know how that video um, that I did with him turned out. He said it will be out in about three weeks. So I will make sure I um, let you guys know when he has that uploaded. You know what, Sarah? The, the documentary, it seems like no one can find it. It was on Amazon for a while. And then it was on some other format. And now no one can find it, which is very upsetting. It's um, such a good documentary. A little too much light, right, Bob? Thank you. And I'm not I'm wearing my pajama pants. I don't think that's going to work. No, it's not. Nothing's going to work. And I'm wearing pajama pants, so I can't stand up to go turn the light out. So it is what it is. And it's Alaska, and the sun's not going down anytime soon. <laughs> Hi, King's Corner with Travis. How are you? Thank you, Jan. I don't feel angelic. I want to tell my husband you said that because I think he thinks I'm a little bit of a demon. I don't know why. Um... So back to get it together. I'm trying, Williams. I think I know who you are, Mac. I'm good. So, okay. I'm just going to update you guys on some things that are happening. We are, my husband and I are buying a house. 
and which I'm very excited about because I will have a studio in my house that is not my bedroom, which will be great because one of the th- <laughs> I really am very self conscious about doing these lives because I don't have a really good place to do them and there's no editing involved. And my background is radio. So you don't have to worry about what you look like or how your makeup is or your hair. So I was telling Ashley that doing these lives is really outside of my comfort zone and I get really nervous doing them. Mac. I can't believe Mac is here. So guys, Mac is an old time radio friend of mine. And, um, yeah. Thanks for being here, Mac. <laughs> Hi, Mary. Nice to see you. Sarah, Jamie, from your Vivian Cash podcast, the documentary sounds as though it was very well done. I will keep an eye out for it. Thank you so much for recommending it. If you can find it, Sarah, please let me know where you found it because I find it so odd that it just disappeared from all the formats. It was so well done. And what's so sad about the Vivian Cash story is she was erased from his history. And she was the mother of his four daughters. And I just find that so tragic. It, it's, it's really sad. It's very sad. Thank you, Mary. <laughs> you make me feel better. <laughs> Um, so unlike Ashley, I don't have a list of trivia questions. I thought we would just talk, kind of catch up. I, like I said earlier, I just uploaded a video that I'm very proud of about Patsy Klein. She is one of my idols. I adore her. Yes, King's Corner with Travis. Vivian was made to look like she was just a nag which is really unfortunate because that's what that's not what her entire personality was about. No. And you know, yeah, every time I think about it, I just oh, it kind of makes me sick to my stomach the way she was treated. And but isn't that kind of like how first wives sometimes are? <laughs> the second wife kind of gets all the the glory. That's how I feel. Not that it's personal or anything. Now, I'm just thinking, you know, my mom, my parents were married for 13 years, but my dad and stepmom were married for 35 years. And it was interesting when I was doing the show with my brother on his show, we talked a little bit about our families and the dynamic of having a step parent and their families. And so it's very interesting how like the second wife, usually in most situations are married longer than the first wife. And they, even if the first wife is the mother of the children, it's, it's, they kind of get erased, which is sad to me. Mary Patricia, yes. So check it out, guys. The t-shirts finally came in. Mary's, your t-shirt went out on Thursday or Friday. I can't remember because I've been having to do them in sections. So you guys, the Jungle Room t-shirt. Now, this is a pink one. We have them in blue, white, red, pink, I think I'm freaking, a yellow. And there's a picture on the Jungle Room podcast Facebook page and on our website. You guys, we, I am giving away a t-shirt tonight, but if you want to order one, they're only $14.99 and they're really good material. So super happy. So shout out to Sassy Girl Apparel, who is our Jungle Room sponsor. They did the t-shirts. You guys check them out. Randy, of course you can win. Everybody can win. But if you want to buy one, go to jungleroompodcast.com. Go to our merch store and they are there. But I am giving away a Jungle Room t-shirt tonight. And, of course, 
da, 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 da. a Heather Lomat CD. So you have a chance to win a CD by Heather Lomax and a Jungle Room t-shirt. Color and size, your choice. That's great, Terry. So I was married before and I'm still very close to my um, my ex-husband's family. As a matter of fact, his aunt and uncle stayed with my husband and I last summer when our son graduated, when my ex-husband and my son Jacob graduated high school. And we're still, you know, I'm still friends with my former father-in-law and my ex-husband's stepmom, who is more of a mother-in-law than his actual mom. <laughs> she was... She was kind of special. Um, and I th I'm pretty sure my husband, Andrew, is still good friends with his former in-laws. I don't think you do you can divorce the person, but you don't have to divorce the family. That's my opinion. Ah, uh, like that color. Okay. S what does the saying mean on the shirt? The saying is... This is the jungle room and it's rock, vinyl, and eyeliner. Rock, because we talk about rock music. Vinyl, because all the music and musicians that we talk about sound the best on vinyl. Eyeliner, 60s makeup. Um, before I had crow's feet, I wore a lot of eyeliner. And it's an Elvis-inspired podcast. So there you go. Thank you, Kelsey. So Kelsey Weaver just wrote, Patsy Klein is one of my favorites. Really enjoyed the new video. You guys, if you would do me a huge favor, go check out Faded Love, Patsy Klein on the Jungle Room YouTube channel. We just launched that video today. Please give it a thumbs up, comment. I'm really trying to grow my YouTube channel. <laughs> Kyle's at a red light, so he's just checking in. Great. Yay. So, okay. Well, I don't have a list of trivia questions. I don't really, I feel like trivia night is more for Ashley. And, oh, you guys, I just can't come up with really great questions. Hi, Ashley. She made it. Yay. So I thought I like to have discussions. I like to talk about what's going on. And, like I said, we just launched the video, the Patsy Klein video. And so who all here is a Patsy Klein fan? I hope a lot of you guys are because my question is Patsy Klein related. Hi, Nancy. How are you? Welcome to my, my room. <laughs> I made a drink with a half bottle of Crown. Jennifer, go girl. Me. Okay, so we got a lot of. I can give you a trivia question to ask. Okay, so we'll let Greg ask the question. So just so you guys know, I want to introduce some of my team members. I have a great team. I have Jennifer Vogel, Greg Webb, and Kyle Slingo. They're on the Jungle Room team. My biggest mentors by far is, of course, the lovely and beautiful Ashley Drew and the spa guy. I have learned a lot from the two of them, so I appreciate them dearly. I never had Jimmy Dean's book and he had some cool stories about Patsy Cline. That's from Jojo. I need to check that out. Uh, Selena Hugh. I love Selena. We're actually working on a podcast episode about Selena, believe it or not. That's going to be out pretty soon. Mary, I'm so jealous. You're going to see the Patsy Cline Museum. Please take lots of pictures. Patsy Klein was the best female singer of all time. Seriously. Her voice is so mesmerizing. I, I, I mean, do we have anyone that sounds like her? I think Leanne Rhymes comes close, but not as developed as Patsy Klein. Hugh, I hope you like it. I love, love Selena. Okay, Greg, what's the question? So Greg is going to ask the question. He's going to post it. 
and whoever gets it right will win a Heather Lomat CD. Da, 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 da. And anyone is eligible, Ashley, even you, even though I think you already have a Heather Lomat CD. Hi, Eric. Hi, Carol. I love Karen Carpenter too, Mike. I so love Karen Carpenter. Okay, Greg. <laughs> Waiting for you, dude. I need to do a Karen Carpenter episode. She was part of my um, my listening growing up. Okay, so Greg said he had a question, but I don't know what he's doing. So, Greg, I'm giving you like 30 more seconds, and then I'm asking a question. Dun, 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 dun. Taking a... Hi, Colin. Nice to see you. Marsha. Oh, that is so cool. I have to read that. So Marsha said, that's funny because I met the spa guy and the spa guy told me about Ashley and then Ashley told me about you, meaning me. This is a fun Saturday night. Cool. Awesome. Welcome. Okay. So here's the question. In Jamie's video, I'm assuming the Patsy Klein video, name one of two songs Jamie mentioned that were recorded by both Patsy Klein and Elvis. Ooh, good question. So you had to have seen the video. Kelsey got it. Blue Moon of Kentucky. And well, I'm Faded Love, but he's in one song, right? So Greg, make sure. I think Kelsey is the winner. Greg. Kelsey. You have won Heather Lomance all this time. Sarah, baby shark. All right. Kelsey Weaver, you're the winner. All right. Okay, in about five minutes, I'll ask the second question. And that question, da -da -da -da, you'll win a Juggle Room t-shirt, any color that we have. We have, again, blue, yellow, white, red, and pink. Kelsey Weaver, congratulations. So Kelsey, please um, Facebook message me on the Jungle Room Facebook page, your address, and we'll get that CD out to you on Monday. Sarah Biskin said Baby Shark. <laughs> All right, that's so cool. Um, okay, so we kind of want to talk about Patsy some more because I just did that video and it seems a lot of you guys are Patsy Klein fans. And I want to know how many of you remember watching the movie Sweet Dreams? That was the movie that got me really like I remember growing up listening to Patsy Klein, but not really knowing who she was as a person. But we got a VCR. I think it was like Christmas of 83 and or Christmas of 84. One of those. And funny story, my parents were getting a divorce. So to lighten the whole divorce news, they bought us a VCR. So anyway, so Sweet Dreams was a movie that I wasn't supposed to watch because it had some scenes and some cussing in there, but I would watch it anyway. And I just loved the way she sang, the way she was so real. She wasn't a, you know, a hoardy torty Miss Pris. She was like real. She was rugged. She cursed like a sailor, which I love because I cuss a lot. And she, she, she quit school to help support her family, to help support her mom because her parent, her dad left. But her voice, like you would think she was a world like royalty. I mean, she just had this voice that just mm, gets you. Yes, Patsy cussed a lot. 
Lovesick Blues. Oh my gosh. Okay, see, I love Patsy Klein's version of Lovesick Blues. Love it, love it, love it. It 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 gets to me. I like it way better than Hank's version. Oh, I used Marsha says I used to listen to her all the time. Then I got into his truck. I'm assuming your husband. And he turned on Patsy Klein. It was fun knowing he picked up, picked it up from me. What is this VCR you speak of? Thanks, Mike. A joke. Got it. <laughs> um, the chemistry between Jessica Lange and um, Ed. His name is, first name is Ed. Jennifer, I forgot the last name. I want to say Helm, but that's not the right actor. Um, yes, the chemistry between Jessica and Ed as Patsy and Charlie. Oh, my gosh. So, Ed Harris. I See, I love me some Ed Harris. Oh, God, he was so good looking to me. And I think he just nailed Charlie Dick. It, it was good. So, I know that uh, Loretta Lynn was a little upset about uh, Patsy's movie because she wasn't included. But... As I've done some research on that, I think they didn't include a lot of Patsy Cline's close friends because she had so many of them. And a lot of people thought they were actually Patsy's best friend because she was their best friend. So the movie Sweet Dreams really concentrated on the relationship between Patsy and Charlie. I still like it. Obviously, there was a lot edited and a lot of creative Stuff that obviously we know can't be true. The plane crash dialogue. We don't know what happened in that plane. But still one of the, a good movie. But there was a lot of creative um, things done that were not accurate. But I think if they did a movie about Patsy today, it would be very different. Sorry. I talk with my hands. Sarah, um, I actually got into Patsy Cline and Johnny Cash through researching and reading about Elvis. Yeah. You know, and I, you know, the fact that Johnny Cash and Elvis, you know, they went on the Louisiana Hayride together, that tour. And, you know, Elvis was portrayed in Walk the Line. I mean, there's a lot. He was also in Jerry Lee Lewis's um, movie about his life. Elvis was really, you know, involved, you know, with a lot of other musicians. So, Marsha, you, um, it was your son. Okay, I got it. Thank you. That's awesome. You know, my kids really love Patsy Cline too on vinyl. So the car accident, you know, when I was doing the video and looking at pictures and, and videos of her, you can really tell the damage that was done to her face. And if you notice like her eyebrows, like they started here and they kind of went like over there, but she was covering up scars and she had a scar. And so she was started wearing those, those headbands. And you, I mean, can you, she was only 30 years old and she seems a lot older when you look at her interviews and pictures, it's really hard to believe that she was as young as she was when she died. Final is amazing, Kyle. Love it. Well, Jerry Lee Lewis, it seems to me, <laughs> Jerry Lee Lewis was not exactly very well liked within the group. He seems to be have been too much of a person. And there's um, a story, I think it was in Sonny West's book, that Jerry Lee Lewis was getting on Elvis's, um, this was maybe like the late 60s, early 70s. And Jerry Lee Lewis was talking to Elvis like backstage at one of his performances. And Jerry, the colonel wanted to talk to Elvis. And someone told Elvis, hey, the colonel wants to see you. And Jerry's like, you're a big star. You know, the colonel should be coming to you. Not you, not you going to him. If you were, if I, if it was Jerry Lee, that's what I would be telling him. And Elvis got up and politely said to Jerry Lewis, maybe that's why 
I'm in the position I'm in and you are where you are. Have a nice night, Jerry. It's like, ooh, touche, Elvis. Yeah, Ashley, I did too. She did look a lot older. So, yeah, it's so sad. Hi, Craig, how are you? You know, I was a sh I was kind of shocked that Elvis and Buddy Holly played in the same venue because you don't think of them in the same ROM. You know what I mean? You don't think of them in that same atmosphere. But no, they were. They they came up together. Sick burn, yeah. I love Elvis. Jennifer, I'm lost. I'm sorry. He didn't really make it until 1957, Greg. Yes, but he was on the Louisiana Hayride and he was part of the Million Dollar Quartet. And I was referring to the late 60s, early 70s, whenever that story took place. You know, a lot of, a lot of um, people think that, Sarah, that... Elvis and the Colonel. You should listen to the episodes I did of the Colonel. It may change your uh, your ma mind about him. I did an interview with Alana Nash is on the YouTube channel about Colonel Tom Parker. Listen to that, and then listen to my interview on the podcast with John Daly. I'm telling you, and then listen to my interview with Charlotte um, Charles Stone about the Colonel. Everyone has a different perspective on the Colonel, but I've learned so much about this man that I now have a newfound respect for Colonel Tom Parker. I think his job was to protect Elvis. And if it meant people hating him, he, he was like, so be it. I sympathize with Jerry Lee. I am too much for a lot of people. Yeah, but did you marry your cousin? Your 13-year-old cousin, Jennifer? <laughs> Just asking. <gasps> Buddy Holly, Eddie Cochran, Gene Vincent, all day. Yes, Travis, I totally agree. And Sarah, yes, I adore Alana Nash as well. I adore her books. She is, she's actually probably the nicest person you would ever meet. She is just so kind and she has been so nice to me. And she's given me a lot of great advice about how to handle myself in the Elvis community. I can't say enough great things about her. I wish Elvis would have toured Europe. You know, Elvis never came to Alaska either. Isn't that weird? I would have thought probably like he would have, but I think that would have been cool in the seventies. Oh my gosh. That would have been awesome. That's okay. Everyone can have their own opinion, Sarah. And that's that's what makes it so great. The Stone interview did for sure change the point of view of the Colonel. At least it did mine. That's from Marsha. Terry Wright. I know. I wish he would have. I know. God, he should have. Um. So the Alana Nash part one is on the YouTube channel. But if you go to the Jungle Room Podcast dot com, it's actually... It was actually a podcast episode. And then I turned the Colonel part of her interview into a YouTube video. So I have two venues, a podcast and this YouTube channel that I'm trying to grow slowly but surely. It's getting there. My friend just sent me an Elvis bottlehead. Okay, we need pictures, Kyle. Okay, so Blizzard Baby. I'm reading Baby Let's Play House. Did you like that one? I'm only up to 1957 right now. Yes. I did like that book. There are a few things in there that I wish would have she would have gone in more detail about. But overall, I did like the book. J 
Jennifer, I'm not even going to touch that. Okay. I got to take a sip of my champagne. All right. We're 30 minutes in. And I told Ashley, I can only do an hour. I, I, I get really self-conscious on these live videos. So, okay. Who wants to win a Jungle Room t-shirt? And you get to choose between, again, red, blue, yellow, white, and pink. Any size that you want. All right. And anyone can play. Ashley, yours is already in the mailbox. But you can still play. Okay. Are we ready? Did Truman Capote know Elvis for real? That's news to me. Um, no, Sarah, I will not be in Memphis, unfortunately, in August of this year. Um, I've never been to Memphis. I've never been to Graceland. And with the pandemic, one thing, I think it's too risky for me to go right now. Two, I don't want my first visit to Memphis to be limited on what I want to see and do. So we will be going in January and we'll also be going next August 2021. I'll still be doing the Ginger Alden event next year, God willing. And then I'm coming in January for birthday week. So I'm bummed about it, but I'm trying to stay optimistic. Okay, so here's the question. Before Elvis Presley met Richard Nixon, he flew to L.A. before he flew to Washington, D.C. Who did he call to join him in L.A. at the airport to go with him back to Washington to meet Richard Nixon? Who did he call? Dude. Do, do, do. Doug, you won. Yes. Jerry Schilling. That's right. Gosh, you guys are good. That was like, bam, bam. <laughs> it was Jerry Schilling. So he called Jerry. So Elvis left Graceland. As you guys probably know, there was a little bit of an argument, a little tiff with Vernon and Priscilla about the colonels, supposedly. Elvis left. No one knew where he went. He went to the airport by himself and he already planned to go to Washington, but he was a little, I guess, probably not very comfortable doing it by himself. So he flew to LA, to LAX, called Jerry Schilling. Elvis had no money, nothing. And he told Jerry to bring $500 in cash. And this is where the story gets interesting. So Jerry Meets him at the airport. He has the $5 in cash. They're going to Washington, D.C. And on the plane, there's a soldier coming back from Vietnam. And Elvis gave, told Jerry to give him the $500. And Jerry said, boss, this is all the money that we have. And Elvis said, what did I say? Give him the $500. And he told the soldier, thank you for his service. And, you know, wished him all the best. And, you know, that right there just shows you what kind of person Elvis Presley was. Yes, he had many, many flaws, many. But I think his core was always that of good. And he just didn't have many opportunities to show that side of him. And I think that's why he gave away a lot of things because he was generous and he was a giving person and he was, he really cared about his fellow man. Blizzard baby. Didn't he have some kind of rash on his face from eating chocolate on a plane? Um, that's a new one. Did not know that. <laughs> it was about Elvis spending. Yeah. They were, Um, Doug, Ashley already has, 
uh, a shirt. I've already sent her a pink shirt, Doug. You are you don't have you. I was just showing what the Jungle Room T-shirt looks like. So if you want a T-shirt, Doug, you did win one, and you have a choice between uh, red, blue, white, yellow, and of course pink in any size you want. But if you don't want a Jungle Room T-shirt, you can just let me know, and I can send you something else, and I can give it to the second place winner. So if you want to just Facebook message me on the Jungle Room podcast Facebook page or message me here on YouTube, um, the size and the color that you want. <sighs> All right. Okay, you guys. Well, we have about 15 more minutes. You guys don't really know me. Most of you guys um, just followed me here from Ashley's channel. So, you know, if you guys have any questions you can ask me and I'll keep my hands down here or we if you guys have something that you guys want to talk about we can talk about it as well thank you Kyle like who wouldn't want a jungle room t-shirt Anastasia really Anastasia I have not heard that story I wasn't aware of Elvis having a chocolate aller allergy I knew he had glaucoma. I didn't realize he had any allergies. That's interesting. Oh, God. Life would suck if I had a chocolate allergy. I'd love me some chocolate. Therapy, I'm sorry. I don't know anyone allergic to chocolate in person. How many seasons are there of the Jungle Room? We have four seasons. We're in the middle of our fourth season. I shouldn't say the middle. We're only like five or six episodes into the fourth season. So, yeah. I started the podcast in 2018. <laughs> and you're like, well, that's only been two years. How can you have four seasons? Long story. Um, but I feel like this season we have hit our groove and we are growing. So um, again, junglerooompodcast.com. You want to check it out. Riley Jane, I'm with you, girl. I love my chocolate. I do know that Elvis was allergic to codeine. Yes. So what's different about this season? Thank you, Ashley. Great season. <laughs> Great questions. Um, what's different about Season four of The Jungle Room is that we are more of an Elvis-inspired podcast. We're kind of gearing off to not just talk about Elvis himself, but we are talking about other musicians and other um, individuals who were either inspired by Elvis or Elvis himself was inspired by. So we have um, one of the episodes I'm working on right now that I am really getting into is Warry Hamilton. Um, I, I knew who Roy Hamilton was growing up because we had, um, some of his records, but I really started to get more diligent about my research of him based on the TCB cast podcast. They have some great episodes on Roy Hamilton and that's another person, another musician that just did not, has not received the credit he deserves. And I'm hoping to change that. I'm hoping to start bringing more attention to Warry Hamilton. Yes, listen to Kyle, you guys. You're going to love what's coming up here soon. Subscribe. If all of you right now would subscribe to this YouTube channel and also subscribe to the podcast, but you can subscribe before you leave YouTube, I would so appreciate it. I would love each and every one of you. Just click the little subscribe button. Click the like button. It's free. It's so free. Um, thank you, Harold. <laughs> thank you, Harold, for subscribing to my YouTube channel. Just got a little alert there. Thank you, Harold. Thank you, Mary Patricia. You guys are awesome. Thank you. 
Um, so again, you guys, you want to go to the jungle room podcast.com on our website. That was done by Kyle Slingo, who is amazing. We have our merch store. We have our YouTube videos and our podcast episodes, everything, everything is right on that website. Thank you, Sarah. I love you guys too. You guys are awesome. And I am not kidding. <laughs> I'm going to tell you guys the truth right now. Doing these lives make me so nervous. So, so nervous. So thank you because you guys are really, really nice. And um, I really get bad anxiety every time I do one of these live videos. Um, about a month ago, you stated you didn't care for Charlie Hodge. Could you elaborate? Mike, wow, you have a good memory. So I can't really say why I don't like Charlie Hodge. Um, like the main reason, because I was sworn to secrecy and it's not my story to tell. Um, but I can say this based on what I know, I don't feel like he always did good to people, which you could say, well, he's a human being. Every, you know, no one's good all the time, but I think there was a dark side to Charlie Hodge that most people don't know. And, you know, maybe they do and they just don't talk about it, but I don't, I'm just not a fan. So let's leave it at that. And hopefully one day, you know, there will be, there will be more light shown about him. But I do think that he loved Elvis. I think he probably idolized him a little too much. Um, and Elvis wasn't, you know, from what I've read, um, from some of the guys uh, in the Memphis Mafia, you know, Elvis wasn't always that nice to Charlie, you know, um, and it could be because of some of the things that Elvis knew about Charlie. I don't know. But, you know, Charlie did have a drinking problem. And, you know, Elvis would would be physical with Charlie. There, there's a there's an account in the Memphis Mafia by Elena Nash, where Lamar tells a story that Elvis would, you know, beat him to a pulp. And I think Linda Thompson, or no, it was Ginger Alden in her book, she wrote about a fight, a, two fights, I think, that Elvis and Charlie had. So anyway, ooh, I'm missing a lot. Um, sorry, I'm trying to catch up with you guys. Um, oh, thank you guys. Do you, do I use WordPress? Kyle, I think Kyle does use WordPress. Thank you, Jan. I appreciate it. Cause I get super nervous. Thank you, Ashley. You get it. It is stressful. <sighs> you know, and that's another thing. Um, Anastasia 23, I think I'm saying your name, right? Um, Charlie also made up the whole bone cancer thing. Now, did Charlie make that up to deflect from the drugs? Maybe. Or did he just make it up? Or is it like some suggest that Vernon put that rumor out there to see who was leaking things to the press? So you can go round and round and how that got, got started. There are a lot of rumors about Charlie Hodge and... Uh, well, yeah, he didn't help. How did he help him sing gospel, though, Marsha? I mean, didn't he just sing harmony? Um, do you have a podcast on Charlie? I would love to hear your opinions. You know, no, I'm not going to do a, a podcast on Charlie Hodge because the reasons why I don't like him, I can't say publicly until the individuals decide to tell their story. But I would love to. But no, I don't think I would love to. I'm really not into just putting things out there in the universe. My opinions, I don't really care for him. And 
that's it. <laughs> um, thank you, Mark. I really appreciate that, but I can't put myself on the same level as Ashley. She is a genius at YouTube videos and research. If I can just be half as good as she is, I'll, I'll be doing well in life. Joe annoyed me a bit. He always seemed to push himself into the photos or videos, but maybe I was wanted that way. Joe, Joe, 2471. You know, I'm reading the Memphis Mafia book by Alana Nash right now, and <laughs> they have their own opinions of Joe Esposito, obviously. But I do think that Joe, you know, Joe got lucky. I think I think a lot of the the where Joe was was based on luck and just being there at the right time. Ooh, I went down too far. Thank you, Marsha. Thank you, Jenny. Um, Carol, Kathy Westmoreland said that Elvis had cancer. How does she think that? Well, I think that was the whole bone cancer rumor that got started that I feel like came from Vernon to see who was leaking things to the press. I can keep secrets about Charlie King's Corner with Travis. I think we may, may need to have a conversation. Jamie, how do you feel about Red and Sunny West? Ooh, that's a good question. I know I'm probably not going to be liked well for this. I appreciate Sunny and Red West for who they were as individuals and where they were in Elvis's life. They had some great stories they, to tell about Elvis, great memories that they shared. Yes, the book that they, they contributed with... Um, Steve Dunleavy in the in the 70s, right before Elvis died, was probably something that they died regretting. However, you have to remember the fact that these guys did not make as much money as you think that they would have made. They sacrificed a lot. And yes, by choice, but this was their friend. And I think how how everything went down. You can't just focus on the fact that what they did. Yes, it would bother me if my my good friends wrote a book about me. But also, Elvis himself has to take accountability for the fact that he let his father fire them without really talking to them. So, you, you know, this is why you shouldn't do business with friends. It's one of Both of them are going to go. You, you're going to lose a friend if the business fails. And... Unfortunately, that's what happened. And it's sad because obviously they did not expect Elvis to die. And so for them not to be able to make amends, it's unfortunate. And, you know, who knows what would have happened had Elvis lived. Okay, guys, I'm sorry. I'm just, you guys were, I'm, I'm moving down. Um, thank you, Ashley, for saying that I rock the podcast world. I love you. Hi, Gary. Welcome. Um, okay, Travis, whenever you want to talk, I'll share if you share. Jenny Lowe, I know the new Elvis Presley movie is coming out next year in 2021, but do they have a release date yet? I don't think so because the whole pandemic thing has changed everything. So I think they are just now um, back filming. Hopefully we'll see it in 2021. Uh, Wayne Potter, I agree with you, Jamie, about Sunny and Red. They did regret the book, and no, they didn't make much money. Elvis should not have fired them. Or Elvis should not have had his father fire them. Um, Spa Guy just did a tour of Red's Ranch. Yes, and that is a great video. You guys should check that out. Um, yeah, I felt like they had a lot of remorse. And I can tell you, I can go ahead and tell you guys now, I'm interviewing Dave Ebler tomorrow morning. And that will be on an upcoming Jungle Room podcast. So guys, stay tuned. I'm really excited and nervous to talk to Dave Ebler. <laughs> a little intimidated. 
don't tell him I said that. Uh, hi, Heather. Heather, we gave away your CD tonight. My girl, Heather. My girls, Heather and Ashley are here, the hot chicks. So happy. Um, to me, Red and Sunny West really did the best they could for Elvis. I think they did. And I think, you know, it's not fair to base all of your opinions on one action that they did. And it's funny. Obviously, they wrote a book and that you can't just take that away. But out of everything they did for Elvis, everything else, and they did this one thing. Yes, it was a big thing. But, you know, look at all the things that Elvis fans forgive Elvis for. You know what I'm saying? It, it's, it seems a little hypocritical. Um, yes, Ashley, Dave Epler. I'm interviewing him tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. my time, 10 a.m. his. Uh, and Marsha, do you, have you read Sunny West's second book? Everyone should. This is what I want to know. I've read Sunny West's um, 2006 or 2007 book a few times. So he writes in the book that when he got married to Judy, Elvis was his best man. And then he says that Priscilla was the matron of uh, the maid of the matron of honor. But he says that that was a story in a, in of, of itself, but he doesn't tell the story. I want to know the story of how Priscilla became the matron of honor. What was that about? There's a story there. And if anyone knows Judy, please have her tell us. I want to know. Um, yes, Dave did say that. Um, how can you protect someone from themselves? Yeah. Dave seems like he's a cool guy. So, um, Sonny teared up so much and talks about Elvis. I think he always felt bad. I think they all felt bad. <laughs> Ashley, you're so funny. Um, I love Sonny's talk that he did about Elvis. Is he on YouTube? Yeah, I've watched that a few times. I think I've heard enough about Priscilla from the Stanleys. Oh, uh, don't. Okay, never mind. Um, but anyway, I want to know the story about how Priscilla became the matron of honor at Sonny's in Judy's wedding. There's a story. We gotta, we gotta figure it out. Ashley, you're the detective. Find out the story behind how Priscilla became the matron of honor at Sonny and Judy's wedding. There's got to be one. It's got to He says it in his book that it's a story, but he doesn't he doesn't tell the story. Jenny, I am trying so hard to get Al Strada. He lives here in Alaska. I'm working it. Al Strada lives here in Alaska, so does Billy Stanley's first wife Angie Stanley. I, I'm trying. Believe me. <laughs> I'm trying to get them on. Um, I would love to have Kathy Westmoreland on. Um, Billy and Joe Smith. Yes, definitely. I'm really good friends with Joey Smith and Dakota. It'll happen. This whole pandemic thing has messed everything up. So we're working on it. I would love Judy West on. The, and that you, you guys know the first question I would have for her. <laughs> um, Linda Thompson would love it, love it. Love to have Linda on. I don't, I don't know if she would come on my show though. If you guys know her, tell her about me. Um, Hamburger James. <laughs> oh, I've heard a, a cool, a couple of cool stories about Hamburger James. Like, oh, I wish I could tell you guys. I've heard Kathy is a great person. I did a video on on Kathy on on this channel on the YouTube channel. You guys check it out. It's only like a minute or two, but it was one of the first YouTube videos I had ever done. She's out in Malibu, Heather. Heather, Heather Lomatz. Do you have any um, people in your 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 neighborhood that you could hook me up with for an interview? Make sure I clarify. You boys are going to take me out to the desert, aren't you? I remember that. Hamburger James, right? 
Jojo, I totally forgot. That's right. Anita went with Elvis to Red and Parrot Pat's wedding. And didn't they get married in like 1961? So he had already met Priscilla. I'm getting red. Um, depends who you, I don't know. Who do you have, Heather? Ooh. I feel like I want to give away another t-shirt. Who wants another t-shirt? Guys, don't all speak at once. Okay, I can ask one more question before we we end this. Well, hello, Gurdeep. Wow, I was just getting ready to um, to end this, but Gurdeep is here. Gurdeep, ladies and gentlemen, is the one of the co-hosts of the TCB Cast podcast, which I was talking about earlier. In regards to Rory Hamilton. Nice to see you, Gurdeep. All right. Don't, <laughs> Ashley's like, don't end it. Okay. I'll, I'll see how long I can last. Um, okay. So here we go. Another question for a Jungle Room t-shirt. Are you guys ready? It's party time. No, <laughs> You guys are hilarious. Max, send out the link to allow us supporters to purchase a t-shirt, please. Kyle, can you please put the jungleroompodcast.com link in the conversation for Mac so he can go to the website to buy a t-shirt? Jungleroompodcast.com. Then you click on shop and you can have the t-shirts. And you guys, before you give me crap about talking to Mac that way. I, he's like my brother. And yes, Gurdeep, I've already asked two questions. I'm not like Ashley, so I don't have a list of questions. My lives are not, <laughs> are not um, just trivia, but here we go. Click on merch store. Um, Kyle, if you just put the link in, um, in your conversation so Mac can just click on it. Guys are so funny. They're making me laugh. All right. Here we go. What? Who was the author of the 1971 book Elvis? For a Jungle Room t shirt. No Googling, guys. The 1971 book Elvis. Who was the author? Gurdeep. Gurdeep gets it. Yes, it was Jerry Hopkins. But Gurdeep, you already have a t-shirt. I already sent yours. So it is going to go to Wayne Potter. Wayne Potter, you have won a Jungle Room t-shirt. Because Gurdeep already sent your t-shirt out. So anyway. And I'm live. Hi. Yes. It's my husband. <laughs> okay. Um all right, you guys. Wayne Potter. You just made the list. Yes, Wayne Potter. So if you want a jungle room t-shirt, you won. So sorry, my eyes bother me. Um, just message me here on YouTube or on um the Junk Room Facebook page. All right. All right, you guys. So I am going to go ahead and end this live video. Ashley, do you want to do Instagram live um, in about a half hour? I have to switch out my contacts and do, gla do glasses because this eye... It's starting to bother me. So, Ashley, let me know if you want to do Instagram live. Um, and we can just chit chat and I can get more comfortable. And we can do that in about a half hour or 45 minutes. Yes, Ashley says yes. Okay, so if you guys want to continue the party, we'll be on Ashley Drew's 
Instagram live and I will have glasses on and my hair in a granny bun because that's just what's going to happen. All right, you guys, thank you so much for being here. This was fun. Again, if you would, please like this video and subscribe to the Jungle Room YouTube channel. I'm trying to grow this channel. We're brand new. Also, go to jungleroompodcast.com and subscribe to our podcast. All right, you guys, love you all. Until next time. Thank you. And don't forget, guys, everyone that has won a T-shirt or a CD, make sure you message me with your address, size, and color of the shirt you want. All right. Much love. Until next time.